Today I wanted to make a really quick video um, about a cool little analogy that I think might help you uh, move with your emotions, specifically the more difficult ones like anxiety, um, grief, you know, deep, deep sadness. And this analogy I use when I'm speaking with um, my clients in the in the counseling practice, it's, it's called the bathtub analogy. People often will come to me and they'll talk about ways um, that they're, they're struggling with panic attacks or a high anxiety or deep, deep grief or depression and they want to know how to how to combat that. And they may or may not have a list of tools that they use in the past. And oftentimes what comes up is people talk about uh, tools as though the same tool can be used all the time, uh, no matter what it is, no matter how bad the anxiety is or, or how bad and painful the grief or the sadness is, in the, in the same way that um, we, we might make the mistake of thinking that a hammer alone is going to build an entire house for us. There's this idea that sitting with our anxiety, and I'll use anxiety for, 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 this, for this context, um, sitting with anxiety uh, when it's really, really bad can be enough to just to, to quash it. And oftentimes when we're on the scale of, you know, between zero and 10 and our anxiety is at a nine or a 10, it's very, very uh, almost traumatizing, let alone difficult to just sit with our anxiety when, uh, when we're panicking that much. So when we're at a nine or a 10, basically the water in the bathtub is overflowing. So to merely sit with it, I see that as analogous to trying to just grip, you know, get a little spoon and trying to get all the water out as it goes. Obviously, the best way to do it is to rip the, the rip the plug out or turn the tap off. We're probably going to want something that's a little bit better in that moment, whether that be um, a very, very effective and powerful breathing technique or, or sometimes even people who need to use Valium or whatever it is, some kind of medication, that's totally fine. They need that in that moment because our anxiety is at a nine or a 10. Sitting with our anxiety, and I'm just gonna to continue to use anxiety in this example, sitting with our anxiety when it's a two or a three or a four can be a really great way to practice our ability to sit back and observe the emotion. But it's probably not something that I would suggest people use when they're at an eight or a nine or a 10. What I hope you're starting to understand is this idea that different tools work within different contexts depending on where we are on the spectrum of our emotional intensity. When you're really, really depressed or really, really sad, or you're moving through something really, really difficult, sometimes distraction, doing something you really enjoy, um, having a nice bath, eating some nice food, or doing something just to calm you down and get you out of that really, really painful, deep end of the spectrum is not only enough, but it's the right approach. So then the question is, how can you become better at uh, maintaining, sustaining, building your self-awareness so that you can actually move with your emotions so that they don't ever get to a nine or a 10, an eight or a nine or a 10. So this is where we start talking about self-awareness and the idea of sitting with your emotions um, and checking in with yourself so you kind of get an understanding of where you are throughout uh, throughout any given day can be a really powerful tool to help you so that you know you're always at most a three or a four in terms of sadness or anxiety you know you don't ever let it get to an eight or a nine or a ten so what are some really great ways to do that talking openly and honestly with your friends and your family talking about how you feel understanding that the language of the emotions is just that it's a different language you know we are, we're so good in this society, in the Western world, at, uh, at pretending like our emotions are, are worse or inferior to, to rational thinking. But what um, a lot of evolutionary psychologists now observe is that the way we rationalize is actually just a way of justifying the way we feel. So our emotions come primary and our rational thinking mind is actually secondary to that. So emotions are really, really important and understanding and checking in with yourself all the time is, is absolutely paramount to developing really good emotional awareness and uh, emotional wisdom, I suppose. Journaling, checking in with how you feel, open honest communication with a friend, dancing, actually moving the energy. Emotions, uh, I believe they come from energy in motion. So moving with the emotion, especially anxiety, when you're at an eight or a nine or a 10, anti-anxiety medication, um, breathing techniques, 
you do what you need to do essentially in those moments. And your, your counselor, your clinician, your psychologist, your psychotherapist, they can help you find tools that work for you when it's just too difficult to manage. But journaling, like the things like I said before, when you're at a two, three, and a four, they can be really powerful and they can help you sustain those levels so that they don't ever get up to an eight or a nine or a 10. Just to uh, come back full circle, viewing your emotions like water in a bathtub, the better you are able at uh, checking in with yourself, integrating the, the way you feel, the better you're able to, to leave the bath water at a good level so that it doesn't overflow, so that you don't then have to deal with cleaning up the mess that comes from an overflowing bath of water. Really hope that helps guys. Talk to you soon.